here's a special treat. We stopped in to see an engine builder who is a legend. There's a lot of engine builders, but there's not that many legends. This is Brad Anderson. Brad, you've been punching out big blocks, big Chryslers for a long time. You have a lot of customers using your engines. Kind of give us a little quickie on how you started up on this whole deal. Well, actually, I started legitimately started business in 1981. Um, uh, I had been working at Doug's Headers, was was in charge of research and development, and uh, we closed that down. And I decided I didn't want to work for somebody else, so I started building cylinder heads in my garage behind my house in Covina, and. Uh, Ultimately got my first machine, realized I had to move into a building, leased a building in La, uh, Laverne, and was there for uh, five years, and I built this building, that's 22 years ago. I've been here 22 years. And you're not just an engine builder, you're a drag racer, because I remember when you were running your gassers uh, in NHRA competition, you always had strong running cars. Yeah, my kids probably didn't have shoes at times, but I had race car parts. Well, that's all that's important, isn't it? <laughs> well, uh, we've taken a kind of a quick look in the back, and I know we're going to wander through, and you can point out some stuff. You have a new engine, a new ProMod engine, and this is it here. Why don't you give us a little clue as to what's what's going on with this baby? Well, this is a updated, I call it updated version of a, of a 426 Hemi. It's got the camshaft raised up, and it's a 70 millimeter cam. Push rods are perfectly straight. It's got three 200 lifter spacing. Uh, Chrysler originally had inch 800. We went to two inch. Now some guys have two 200, two 400. One's got two 600. Well, this is three 200. And it, the push rods are perfectly straight. It's got an inch 095 lifter. Um, basically, it's four 800 centers yet. I didn't want to lengthen that, even though it'd be nice in a lot of ways. But what you've done is added weight. and Racers are always about the weight. So in a blowing configuration, you don't need to be bigger than 520 some cubic inches. This is still 521 or 526 or whatever you want, or in the fours if you want. But uh, it took the mag off the motor. The mag is out here on the accessory drive. The oil pump is on an accessory drive because you had to get that bronze gear out of here in order to move the lifters and get everything straight. So uh, I'm pretty optimistic with it. There's a... Numerous things changed. The head bolt patterns changed slightly. You get this, get the head bolts out of the sleeves. Um, yeah, this this particular one is a multi-stage dry sump, or it can be a wet sump with just one little, one little section right here. The belt that drives it's internal, so you don't even know that it's a belt-driven pump. But there's no way anything can get blower belt comes off. It can't get at this this belt. It's enclosed. So as I understand it, Brad, one of the big advantages of spreading the uh, push rods is now you're not pinching in on the intake ports on the cylinder yet. No, there's no there's no push rod interference into the ports. It's totally isolated. I can show you the cylinder head. Uh, let's, like I said, the push rods, you no longer have to have bar slot lifters. I mean the bar lifter. This is a T-slot like Pro Stalker runs. Uh, that's basically it. So when you build a, a block, a new block like this, and since you build the cylinder heads too, it's a perfect match pair. Everything is going to work with everything. A, a racer who knows how to put together an engine can just buy these parts, put these together. Right, right. It's Everything's going to fit. You don't right. have to grind on this or massage nope, that. No, nope. we make the, 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 the uh, you know, the camshaft is a unique situation. It's a six lobe, six cam journal. S7 tool steel cam that we supply and they can give we can give them the grind we recommend or I can sell them the blank and they can put their own particular grind on it. That's this is gonna be a killer engine, I got I feeling. hope. I hope. Well all your other stuff, I mean we were just up in Las Vegas and there were half a dozen racers up there running your engines in the in these uh, streetcar races too. Yep, 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 yep. You have a lot of good customers up there. Yep. Well let's Maybe you can kind of give us a quick tour around. Sure. Fill us in on what we're looking at here, Brad. This is a five-axis head porting machine, and it's porting a new head uh, for, for a ProMod application. Uh, as a matter of fact, I believe this is for a truck puller. So 
This is so, being going to an engine builder in the Midwest. Uh, this is another five axis head porting machine. It's sitting here. It's just, I don't know what it's done, but it's waiting on the operator to change, change parts. So. This is a long way away from uh, what you started building in the, in the early days for engines, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, it's changed a lot. I got, we have 14 CNCs in here. And uh, that one over there is building intake manifolds right now. Isn't science wonderful? Oh, yeah. Yeah, this would have taken, I did these to start with on a bridge port in my garage at home. And uh, now you just put it up there and push the button and walk away. Of course, it, it costs a lot more money. But this is a twisted rocker assembly for the Pro Mod motor. Uh, because when you, when, you, when you move the push rods as much as I did, you had to move the rockers. So we rotated them around on a, on a center line. And this is the holder for the rocker assembly. I'll show you a completed one in the back. There's three of these 680 horizontal Mazaks here. They each hold 120 tools and are dedicated tools. So this one's doing the first and second op on a raw forging. And then they go to this one, which makes the block in whatever configuration the customer ordered, half inch short, standard deck, 100 tall, whatever bore size, whatever cam size, whether it be Ford Journal, 60 millimeter, 65, whatever. And as I understand it, Brett, you have a unique way of doing the uh, heat treating on these to make sure that the, every... Well, yeah, the, the, the forging comes in here at 425 pounds, and we take it down to about 165 or 70, and then it goes out and gets heat treated. And now you can get a nice thorough heat treat. You don't have to worry about it moving, and everything is, is right. And then it comes back and gets rerun through that, those operations in a finished condition. Now, Brad, I understand this is what a cylinder head looks like after just the initial operations. Is that correct? That's right. That's had one operation, and there's, they're stacked here, and then they go back on this 680 back here, and it does them four at a time. You have to, it does one operation, gets flipped over, and then it's finished when it does the other operation. So, Now, the way I understand this is these are basically... Um, on a design that's uh, that started with maybe the 426 Hemi Chrysler, but I suspect there's not a Chrysler part left on these things. Oh no, no, no. We the original, what we call everybody's referred to as the Fathead. We we did the first one in 1988, and since then there's been very many many variations, and now there's four or five people have copied it and make their own version of that of this head with the tick it accommodates the same accessories that we made back then this machine here is building main caps and and it does the, the steel billet rocker arms and right now i don't know what it's, it sounds like it's making a main cap and there's some main caps right there there's main caps right here so there isn't any parts on here that you don't make on this very shop and that's probably why everything fits together. Yep, we make, when it comes to the block, we make every single part. You know, this all that gets done here is it gets anodized out, but every other part we do in house. That's the block after heat treat and two operations. It's ready to be put up on this horizontal and made into whatever block the customer ordered. As I said, deck height, bore, deck, deck height, bore centers. Uh, yeah. I mean bores, uh, camshaft size, lifter spacing, whatever is being made ordered. Now these blocks over here, these have gone through quite a few operations, and what are they waiting for right now? Well, some of them are repairs. Some have been welded up. We put them on the center, on the main line, and he does the the pan rail or the deck surface or the, or the bore, as a, in a repair figure, figure configuration. That's what he's doing right now. That's a repair block. This is one of the things that we couldn't do in the old days with the stock blocks. Is is really fix them very well. But with these big billet units, you can... You virtually don't... It's all, it does happen, but it's very rare one gets ruined. Yeah. Like when I raced and used KB cast blocks, I'd figure two or three a year in my budget. Yeah. Uh, and now, you've really got to screw up bad to, to hurt one. Here we have some cylinder heads. Tell us a little bit about these, if you will. Well, these have come off the headboarding machine up front that, you, that you've seen. And this in here is is waiting it's had the valve guide work done and stuff it's got to have the o-rings put in it and then it'll be uh 
valve jobbed, and then it'll be done. Now what we have here is a sonar head getting a valve job. Is that it? Yep. Yep. Now if you watch, see it's gonna gonna cut on the way out. See, then it it comes in, goes down. Yeah, that's rough cut eight right there. This takes a little each time, but it's it's running off the pilot, so we know it's on center. And I suspect this is a little bit more than a two or three angle valve job. Oh yeah, it's whatever he's designed. Designed. There it is. There's a picture of it right there. See. So whatever he's come up with, this gentleman designs the head and does the valve work and all that. So flows it on the flow bench and. He sort of looks like he knows what he's doing. He's been doing it since here since 1988. 89. 89. So he's been—he's a short timer. Yeah. <laughs> well, now, Brad, uh, I know we're not. There's some places in this shop that we're not going to show for proprietary reasons, but I did want to show uh, some of your toys. Um, certainly, your pro mod car and things like that. And I know that you're really into the pro mod and that high end door car world uh, both in uh, with the 1471 with the twin turbocharged setup and all that kind of stuff tell us a little bit about your car well this in here is just a roots blowing car because that's where I started and then I had the turbo car that pursuant sold to Donnie Walsh and, and Harry Herutska uh, and then I decided to go back to a blowing car for a little while to try to make them competitive so that's why the new engine and the new stuff that we showed you earlier I think I can make it run significantly better upstairs. So that's my my challenge. So, so, so what you're trying to do right now is to get this type of a combination to be competitive with these ni twin 94 millimeter and bigger turbocharged combinations. Well, yeah, the 88 stuff on the NHRA level. Yeah. I mean, this is a, an example of the motors that they run in the PDRA Pro Extreme class with the screw blower. Yeah. Uh, you know, we're limited to 41, 42, 43 pounds of boost, depending on what we can possibly get. Uh, where they got 65, 68, this kind of pound right. boost. So, who, who designed this car? Who built this car? This is built by uh, Dennis up in Minneapolis. He has the used to be the Don Ness shop. And he was the gentleman that was behind Don Ness all those years. And he's the one that built the car for me. He's a very good, very good craftsman. That's a beautiful car. Yeah, yeah kind of give us, uh, if you will, uh, uh, I mean, you're so famous for this type of an engine. You've been building it for so long. But I know that you're getting involved with the turbo side, uh, which is basically a computerized EFI style combination. Tell us how your equipment fits in with the turbo engines. I mean, an engine is an engine. That's right, and that's why I built that Mustang three, four years ago, and uh, it's just hard. We built the car, and it was a pretty successful car, and when we left the shop, they didn't have to do anything to it mechanically, uh, but I just have to learn to adjust my old mind to the to the electronics end. It's, it's just something that I've never done before, you know. I, I've just recently or in the last few years learned to use a race back right <laughs> so uh the technology is just mind-boggling because available for the turbocharged engines i i think they're just we both know that their weakness if anything if they have one is to the 330 after that get the hell out of their way because they're going to go by you uh and and some of those guys are starting to get that straightened out real good on the bottom and when they get that uh, katie bar the door they're really going to fly we just saw this weekend uh, 272 miles an hour, yep. quarter mile, yep. on, a, on a door car. Well, it wasn't very long ago that that would have been uh, uh, funny car speeds. Oh, yeah, that's exactly right. Uh, there's no alcohol cars, funny cars, but again, we, we're not comparing apples and apples. Alcohol funny car is restricted to a PSI blower at, at 92 over. Uh, 
they don't have any boost. They got 40, 42 pounds of boost. Uh, you know, alcohol dragsters, they go 277, 278, good ones. Uh, but they got 60-some pounds of boost because the blower's turned up. So NHRA's got so many ways that that to restrict everything that well, I'm not a fan of. I just like, let's go race, know. you know. But it is what it is. Well, you know, it, it's, uh, the of course, this Hemi, that's a mainstay with uh, top fuel and fuel funny cars. And I think the way you're building these engines, it's going to start coming into these high-end door car world, too, the, the outlaw type of pro-modified. Um, you, you can't beat that combination. No, no, I, I agree. And here about three years ago, we built a billet water block. So we have the capabilities of producing a water block, and we had a billet. We got a billet water head, so that the guy that that wanted to do the Pro Street deal, if he wanted to get involved with the Hemi, it's possible. Yeah. All they have to do is give you a call, and you'll come up with something. Yep, yep. Just give us a call. Brad, we really enjoyed taking up uh, some time with you. It's always a pleasure. You're an icon, a legend. As both a racer and an engine manufacturer. I don't want to say engine builder, but an engine manufacturer. You make every component in this thing. It's all made right here in Ontario, California. All American stuff. It's just such a pleasure talking to you. Well, thank you. Thank you very much for coming by.